My Jiminy is that Jamie Cullum I see before my very eyes. It is definitely me. I think it's me, actually. Jamie, Jamie Cullum. Now, you may remember last year here, we went mad for this CD. Now, <laughs> it was only, as you recall, made of cardboard. It was very, it was very beautiful production musically, but made of cardboard. Now you've gone all posh on us. <laughs> And you've added tracks into it, Jamie. You've gone mad with the technology. Um, last year, this became, and I, I did say this to you before, probably the most popular Christmas CD that we have been playing on the radio station. I talked to you about Michael Bublé and Rod and all the rest of it. This is beautiful because they're all your songs. It is the most gorgeous CD. So it's thank lovely you. to talk to you again. Oh, it's really great to talk to you. And thank you so much. I really remember how much you championed it last year. And it's quite, it's quite hard to make a mark with, brand new Christmas songs, which is why I didn't put any covers on it last year, because I thought otherwise there's no, you're not going to give the new songs a chance, really. Well, you see, what happened with us was we would, we would play the Piano Man of Christmas, that track, the title track, and it got such a reaction. Then, then we started, obviously, to, to move into the rest of the tracks. I played, I played, um, which, oh, yes, How Do You Fly the other day? And we got such a reaction. Like, oh. it's such an, emo an emotional song. Thank and you. It, it just tears at the heartstrings. It's so I think you might be the only person who's played that one on the radio, and it's actually okay. my personal favourite as well. Um, uh, What's wrong one. with the rest of them? What's wrong with them? Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Marty, but that's why I'm here with you right now, huh? Well, thank you. You look like you're working. You look like you're in a, in a, in a working setting, studio setting. Where are you? This is actually my studio, Marty. So this is where I record and write and do stuff. So I'm, 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 I'm at the very lucky point in my career where I've managed to build my own studio where I do all, where I do everything basically. So I've got two pianos in here, drum kit, organs, old keyboards, microphones everywhere. But it looks enormous. It's not. It's. Do you know? I think it's just because I've, I've, I've got a, 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 like a posh camera hooked up to my yes. computer because I don't, I don't own a laptop. So it's just like a, a camera hooked up to my computer. So it makes everything look a bit more uh, like studio I thought, vibe. I, I saw you. I said to myself, there's, there's Jamie now in Abbey Road. <laughs> I'll take it. It's my version of Abbey Road. It's just about, you know, 1% <laughs> yeah, of the size. Yeah, absolutely. But now look, what you've done is you've, um, you've added. You, so this year you decided to have a part one and a part two. And obviously uh, you've now added all these other Christmas favourites. This is what you've done on the album. now. Yeah, I, do you know, I think it's... As I said to you before, I wanted to give the original songs a chance to fly on their own. And, you know, they really did, actually. I've got to say, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful how people really took this album, like, like yourself, to their, to their hearts in a way that I wasn't fully expecting. I really hoped for that, but you, you, you never... I kind of always lower my expectations when I release anything, really. Um, but I did feel as though the Christmas classics... I'd definitely been asked to do the Christmas classics by my label and said, please do a few classics, please. And I was like, no, the whole point is that it has to be just the originals. That, that was my kind of statement. Yes, yes. And so when it came to this year, I said, well, I did promise and I do love the classics, but I'm going to make it fun for me and make it sound like the after party after the big show. And so we recorded most of it here in this room here. It's fully live. There's no there's no overdubs, nothing. We've got the band in the room. You can't mix an album like this. You just, it sounds the way it does when you walk sure. in the room and when you press play. So, so that's what we did. We, we, we just recorded these. We didn't over plan anything. I collaborated with people, the Kansas Smitty's band, a wonderful singer from LA called Lady Blackbird and another producer called Vernon Springs. So I made it fun for me. And it's very live and very kind of after party feeling. I think that's what I was going but, for. But, uh, yeah, and it works on without question on that basis. I mean, I we, we went to see you. I, I told you the story before, just before lockdown, you played in the Board Gosh Energy yeah. Theatre in here in Dublin, and um, it was the last concert we, we we were at until things started to generally mm. kind of slowly open up. But I know what you can do on live on a stage, you because it sounds like there's millions of people on stage. You have this this great repertoire that you're able to bring forward. And also the sound is so full. So I can imagine what you were able to do in that studio of yours. Yeah, well, I think also I've, I've got to give credit really to the musicians I work with. I'm, I'm again, a bit like having the chance to um, create your own music studio. I think to be at a stage where I can choose the musicians to come in and I'm just always, I always surround myself with people who are far more gifted than I am because I love learning. You? No, I love that. No, it's not. It's not some weird humble brag, Marty. I promise you. It's like there. Are, I'm. 
I'm well aware of what's out there in terms of musicianship, and I love it. I love being around. Yeah, but hang on. Like you that. see, the thing is, yeah, I know. But the point is, you when when I when I started telling people about uh, the piano on a Christmas, and I said, I said, look at this. It just says written by Jamie Cullen. Like people know that this is an exceptional piece of work. By the way, I want to play Silent Night. It's gorgeous. Oh, and some people you. would say, don't touch it, but you did. It's beautiful. It really is very special. Well, I, I'm 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 really glad that you love. I, I think just to go back to what you were saying about writing just to, it was important for me that that album said written by Jamie Cullum almost like it was a musical or a film you know a film musical it's like I wanted to create this this thing that was purely from from my head but you know you talk about the arrangement we did of Silent Night I said to the band of musicians it was a violin player a cello player that I love my friend playing the bass clarinet uh, we had another piano player in here and we had a double bass and I said why don't we play Silent Night and we jammed that out. That was a jam. The Incredible. other piano player, he's called Russ Stanley. He's a genius. He came up with that piano riff. I played a few notes on the other piano here and th they just joined in. And we played, that was done in 10 minutes. And I think what you get when you get really good musicians together with knowledge and passion is they just, it, sometimes the exhale of the breath is all you need. Um, I, it's yeah. like jazz, it's the fusion. It's, it's everybody exactly. bringing in their expertise yeah. to the moment and, and adding layers. Yes, exactly. Doing, you know? Yeah. And of course, you see, that's the other thing people need to remember too. Your great jazz tradition, your great love of the great American songbook and all the, all the years that you've been playing. So the wealth of experience that you bring to this and then to brand new songs. It's a marriage made in heaven. Well, I think also the more I investigate Christmas music and, and, and I'm a part of it, you realise that the Christmas magic comes with the solidity of these Tin Pan Alley great American songbook songs that are, they're built like, like, uh, houses that last for thousands of years they have solid harmonic foundations they have lyrics that rhyme that don't stray too far from the path they're they're cozy but they're solid you know and yeah, i think that's why we playing, love them at christmas absolutely we're still playing songs that are 50 60 70 years old and they still sound fresh and they work for young people too they don't yeah, just work for, sure. for, for, for people who you know love that music all year round to your occasionally or i would say more often than not a bit older you know, they work for people in their in their in their teens because it makes them feel that way that you feel it implicitly. That's so true. That's so true. And listen, speaking of young people, there's a girl called Steffi in Ireland who is your biggest fan. She asked <laughs> me, "Would you would you say Happy Christmas, Steffi?" To her, I will. Happy Christmas, Steffi, and thank you for being a fan. I'm your fan too. Oh, I see. Good man, Jamie. I like the way you brought it back down there. That's very good. <laughs> now let's pick another track on this. Um, if, if, if what about Winter Wonderland? Sure. How you kick it off? Which what, is... a, what a what a great! It's just a great tune, this one, and I love uh, you know if you're if you're listening out for the songwriter stuff, it's when in the middle section, the Parson Brown section, it changes key in an unusual way, and I just love how that's smuggled into the song that we all know. Brilliant. And again, again, here's the point: you do a version of it that's completely different. For example, to to James Taylor's version, for example, it's completely different to all the other versions we know. And again, that's putting your own stamp on it. That's the trick. That's the secret. You know, it really is. And listen, I take it Christmas is going to be pretty special in your household this year. But uh, uh, is, so. it, is it Lyra and uh, Margot, Margo? my children? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we, I, I think everything's slightly um, been thrown up in the air at the moment, hasn't it, with uh, where we are with the pandemic? But my hope is that my family uh, and my wife's family will be all, all together. That would be what we, would be the ideal. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. Well, <laughs> there's quite a lot of people that don't feel that way, of course. <laughs> uh, but I think, you know, my, my, my Christmas memories are with a, a, too many people in, in a room that doesn't quite fit everyone in and too much food and all that kind of stuff. So ideally that would be the situation, but I don't play my own music, just so you know. No, I know you don't. And you said this to me last year, and that's why <laughs> now you don't have to. Somebody else can put on the first side of the CD and you can sit there and, and have the odd glass or something. Wouldn't that be a good idea? And uh, I do you know, I st still, I don't, I don't want to hear my own voice on Christmas day. You know, I, I, I'd like, I like who I am. I like my voice, I but I don't need to hear yeah. it. You know. Are we going to see you? Are you going to come over and see us again? Are you going to, do you, do you think that, is that a, any sort of a plan at the moment or is it futile? Do you know what? I think we're still next year is still doing the gigs that will move from 2020. Yes. And so we managed to finish the um, uh, UK and Northern Ireland ones. And then next year is going to be Europe and America, the ones that were in 2020. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a good few months before I get back to Ireland. But again, that la the last show in Dublin was it's one of my favorites, you know, and it, I'm sure it was connected with the fact that we didn't know how long we were going to be playing for. But it's always a great fun playing in Dublin. Always a great crowd. You love music. Oh my God, do you love yes, music? Yes, we do. Over there. We do love music. And wow. we're, we're awfully taken with you, as I think you've discovered. 
Well, I think you also love, um, I really notice how you love musicians, yes. not just not just music, but I think you appreciate music. It's in your it's in your blood to appreciate musicianship and people that have committed time to an instrument and to their to their voice. And um, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And by golly, do you give it well when you come over on stage? You just you just don't <laughs> stop, do you? You just don't stop. Listen, yeah. a happy Christmas to all of you, uh, to your wonderful family, your lady wife and your two lovely children. We wish you well. And congratulations on what I keep telling people is one of the finest Christmas albums I've ever heard. Mark, too, I think you're one of my big, big supporters around the world. I really appreciate it so much. You you, you keep careers like mine alive. You really do. We so can. thank you so much. It's a great pleasure. Send money. I'll give you the address. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Peter. See ya. Take care, Jamie. God bless you. Cheers. Take care. Thank you, Marty. See you Thank soon. You. And really do have a great Christmas, okay?